Hi, I'm the Reverend Mary Ann D. Younger, and I am your next rector. And that thrills me to my core. I am so excited to get here, and it'll only be a week or so at this point. We've had a really smooth move, although we're still in boxes and bags and bags of paper. Bottom line is, I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm so excited to be amongst you and with you and pray with you and do the work that God is calling us to do as a community. The first time I read the profile for St. Philip's, it seemed really, really familiar to me because it was almost exactly what I had journaled about months before, about what I was looking for. <laughs> so what excites me about St. Philip's is that it's vibrant and it's in a place, Durham, that is vibrant and growing. There's lots of things going on. It's, it's what I like to call a complex system. <laughs> Lots of different moving parts, which energize me. Someone recently on social media asked me, wow, how did you and Chris decide on moving to Durham? And my response was, well, actually, it was St. Philip's Episcopal Church and I that came to an agreement that we were going to come here. However, in thinking about that question, Chris and I love exploring new places. We love going to festivals, whether they be food or music based. We love trying to understand the local cultures through museums, all kinds of things like that. I love to hike, so I'm interested in both the hikes that are in and around Durham and the seashore and the mountains we will be exploring in the next few years. So as you remember, I have a mid-career call to ordain ministry. And once you start discerning a call to ministry, often you have to write something called a spiritual biography, where you look back over your entire life, trying to find those moments that you felt God's presence, those moments where you first felt the sacred. And the earliest experience of the sacred I had was with my grandmother at her Italian Catholic Church in Belvern in Pennsylvania. And being raised Roman Catholic, that church felt completely different to me than any of the suburban churches that my family attended. It was probably just my grandmother's faith and not the place that I was in, which I think is a very good reminder to all of us that regardless of whether we're ordained or not, our own faith and how we express it to those around us, whether it be a small child or a good friend or someone much older than us, can plant a seed that later grows into something rich and powerful. What I love about the Episcopal Church is that we love everybody regardless of who they are, where they're from, who they love, what they've been through. There's a place here in the Episcopal Church for everyone. It's rich in liturgy. It's rich in music. It has beautiful buildings. But more than that, it's the people that are in, inside of it and the way that they look outside of it to express their faith. Saints or other religious figures is always kind of a funny question to me. Certainly in your parish profile, um, there was a speaking of being as bold as Mary Magdalene in the Easter story found in Luke. And I certainly highly respect Mary Magdalene because she faced all kinds of obstacles and still became this amazing speaker on behalf of the gospel this strong presence to the early church, a dear, dear friend of Jesus himself. But I have to say that my favorite saint is actually Thomas, because Thomas, they call him the doubting one. I like to think of him as the curious one, so maybe curious Thomas is better for him. He wants to actually see and feel. He wants to experience Jesus and not just through hearsay. When my bishop 
was coming up with dates for my diaconal ordination, one of the choices was the Feast of St. Thomas. And I thought that was a fabulous choice. So that is also my um, ordination date as well, which is December 21st. My family teases me about this question because I love Lent. And it really isn't I love flogging myself with repentance and all that kind of thing. But both Lent and a little bit of Advent are slower seasons. They are reflective seasons. And as someone who moves at 110 miles an hour most of the time and is very task oriented and high energy, I love those seasons because they slow me down. They give me an opportunity to reflect. They give me an opportunity to think and to be quiet. So I have, would have to say both Lent and Advent are my favorite liturgical seasons. Plus, both of them have fabulous endings. My favorite part of seminary was chapel. I went to two different seminaries. I started out at Lutheran Philadelphia, which is now known as United Lutheran. And my favorite place there was the Schaefer Ashmi Chapel. And I hung out there all the time. I was at every single service. And when that happens, they make you the chief sacristan. <laughs> so now you're in charge of that space and all its various services. Lutheran was a wonderful experience because it was so ecumenical. It was only about 35% Lutheran and 27 other different Christian denominations were present. So I learned a lot there about how our brothers and sisters that are not Episcopalian worship and believe and express their faith. But then when I got to New York City and I was at General Seminary, the Chapel of the Good Shepherd um, was fabulous and I was in it all the time and once again was named the Chief Sacristan in it, which meant I got to work in it all the time. I loved being in the space. I loved worshiping multiple times a day. I love going through the whole seasons of the year, morning prayer, evening prayer, Eucharist, Compline, all the offices. That's my favorite part. I think you may be surprised or maybe not surprised. Uh, I'm a creative person, so I'm always looking for a creative outlet in my outside life beyond church. And for many years, it was needle base, so stitching, needle, needle pointing, cross stitching. Um, and then I went gone through a knitting period, um, basically to make the Christmas stockings that are traditions in the younger household, when it looked like we were having some weddings coming up and adding some new folks to the family. But right now I've turned to photography and I've always loved taking photographs, but I actually got a real camera this past Christmas and, um, and trying to figure out what all the buttons and things are, what they do and how they work. Um, I, I take pretty good pictures actually with my phone, but I'm looking forward to pursuing that more here. And um, so yes, so I am an amateur photographer. You may not know that about me. Relationships absolutely bring me the most joy. And it's not only relationship with God, but relationship with others as they experience God or seek God, and even relationship with others when they're pretty mad at God. <laughs> that works too. And then the relationships we build within this space and the relationships that we build within the community, all in the glory of God, that is the favorite part of my ministry.